I want to talk to you about swelling after surgery and I want to kind of explain to you what it is and how it happens. So I'm just going to take a little pen and paper and kind of go old school and this is kind of how we learned it way back when uh, when I was in medical school. And so if you picture the body um, we talk about these these spaces where fluid can go and so it, when you have surgery it's considered an injury so just like a burn or a car accident or you know a laceration or any of these types of things are all injuries and surgery your body perceives it as an injury and so with any type of injury the body swells and the body will swell in a very specific way everyone is exactly the same as to how they swell. So this is, this is how it works. So I want you to kind of look at this little graph, uh, this little picture here, and imagine this as your body. So these are your cells. You know, your body is composed of cells. So you have muscle cells, bone cells, every, every other uh, type of organ in your body is made up of cells. And so these cells are here and then you have the blood vessels which carry blood through them but they also deliver nutrients to the cells and then they'll take up nutrients or waste products rather from the cells and take that back to your heart so that's a general thing how things work here are your cells this is this is the blood and so there's a, a communication here of fluid delivering nutrients and then that fluid coming out of the cells and going back to your heart. So when you swell, where where does the fluid really go? What I mean, what is swelling? Well, this is this is really interesting. So the fluid goes to what we call the third space. This here, the blood in your blood vessels is the first space. The second space is the cells in your body. And then the third space, which is what we call, is this kind of space in between the cells. And that's the part that really swells. So the way I imagine this is kind of like a sponge. So you have a dry sponge and it takes up a relatively small amount of area. And then if you immerse that sponge in fluid, then it starts to swell and gets bigger. So that's exactly the same thing as to what your body does. So when you have a surgery, which is perceived as an injury by your body, then what your body does is it will expand this third space. So now this third space, remember this is the one I'm talking about, it's kind of like a sponge, will start to get big. And this will start to store fluid in it. And so this whole expansion, this whole third space expands and it gets very, very swollen. So there's a lot more fluid moving here than there is coming back. You're delivering more fluid into this third space than is coming back so your body will swell. If you're to look at how much fluid you're drinking and how much you're getting rid of in urine, you're going to be drinking way more fluid. And so that typically happens in a very standard way. And so usually what happens is this third space here, this third space here will start to really expand very quickly during the first three days. So that's why patients are mostly have reached a peak swelling usually three days after surgery. And once that swelling hits this peak here at the third day, then the swelling will slowly start to come down. Now the interesting thing about this swelling is you'll get a huge drop off, you know, within the first three weeks. But then it's a very, very slow taper all the way down to zero where you don't have any more swelling at 12 months. And I know that kind of seems crazy for people to imagine being swollen for 12 months, but that's the truth. That's what happens. That's why we can't do any revision or look at any any results until the 12 month mark because there's so much changes during that period of time 
because of this long gradual reduction of swelling that happens you know over the over this the last 11 months so during that time this picture this continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger for those first three days and then it's like once that sponge is full it starts to decrease and and i always tell patients kind of if you imagine a sponge that's really full and you give it a good squeeze that's kind of like how you're going to be at three weeks you're going to get rid of a lot of that fluid but then if you leave that sponge out on your kitchen counter and it's just there to dry into a little you know potato chip that takes more time so that's exactly what your body does expands peaks at three days and then squeezes that fluid out over the next 12 months now one thing that's interesting is this is typical swelling there is something else called a seroma for example where you have fluid inside your body but it's not this type of fluid at all it's a completely different so that type of fluid is is let's say this is your abdominal wall here okay this is your muscle in here and then you're gonna have some fat and then you're gonna have your skin over top okay here are all of your you know, your liver and all of your organs and everything in here so what we're talking about with this swelling is on a cellular level a microscopic level but there is something called a seroma and this happens at a macroscopic level and this is actually fluid that's in here a little pocket of fluid that's completely different than typical swelling this is actually fluid that you can feel and you can see and and that needs to be removed and so that's actually where we'll come in and I'll put a little needle in here and remove some of this remove some of that fluid here you can't put a needle or do anything like this because this is microscopic level this is tiny 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 at the cellular level but a seroma is just something different because sometimes people will get these two things confused and you can have the both the same things going on at the same time where your body is generally swollen on a cellular level but you can have fluid on a macroscopic or bigger level or that's just a seroma so i hope that uh, clears things up and gives an explanation you know as to what's happening inside your body after you have surgery as you're swelling and as you're healing and this process is completely normal swelling is a normal process this is how the body heals and so the cells for reasons we don't know they need to have this really big expanded third space in order to heal and that's just normal there's nothing you can do to change it there's nothing you want to do to change it Back when I was a resident in general surgery and looking after critical care patients that were injured in severe accidents in the intensive care unit, you know, there was a movement to try to stop this, to try and prevent the amount of swelling. And the outcomes were worse. So it's kind of like you're interfering with how the body normally heals. You let the body heal, it's gonna go through, expand, and get rid of the fluid. So taking diuretics or water pills or medication or other foods to try to stop this process is really not the right thing to do because your body knows what to do and your body is going to heal. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, then please subscribe to my channel and turn on the little bell so you get notified of upcoming videos. I make videos every week talking about plastic surgery, not just going through the before and afters, but I want to educate you. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.